Your story changed you. Now let it change the lives of others. This is a Candy Factory Mini. So you want to write a book? With Suzette Mullen. Join me as we follow the development of a nonfiction book from idea to completion. We'll explore the creative process as well as the nuts and bolts of pitching and publication. Get a behind the scenes look of my book coaching process, as well as clear takeaways and nuggets of wisdom. Let me walk alongside you as you learn to tell your story. Hello, I'm Suzette Mullen, book coach, nonfiction writer, and your host. Welcome to this episode of So You Want to Write a Book. My goal is to break down the complex process and challenging process of finding and getting clear on your story so that you can finally take action on the book that's been rattling around your head or tugging at your heart. And even if you never plan on writing a book, I will, these tips will give you um, a good path to becoming a more informed reader and a better literary citizen and can help you in your personal or professional writing life. If you have questions, please go ahead and leave them in the chat. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. So for now, just grab a pen and paper or your laptop and phone so you can jot down some notes. And let's get started. In our last episode, we talked about my story finding process and how I helped writer, motivational speaker, and retreat leader Jennifer Diaz find her story. And this week, we're talking about how to corral your book onto one page, which may seem like an impossible task, but it's not. So maybe you, like many others, have an idea for a book you're passionate about. And gosh, maybe your desk, your office, your laptop is covered in sticky notes or index cards and outlines half-written chapters, but there's no book. You get started on your process and then you stop and you start again and you stop again. Maybe you've even stopped believing that you will ever actually write that book. So I hear this from writers pretty much every day and I wanna just share a message I got this week that I've adapted Um, from from a writer that made an inquiry. She said, I have at least eight books in my head, reflections from lectures I've heard, positive and inspirational notes, wishes, and the list goes on. And somehow now approaching a significant birthday, I feel anxious and unfulfilled. I'm getting nowhere in my writing journey since I start and finish and never follow through, even with a chapter. I am stuck. Well, I wonder if any of that resonates with you. I know I used to feel that way. Through much of my 40s, I was in that place. I was going to writers' conferences occasionally and workshops and trying to get a book written, but I just never could gain any traction. But the desire to write that book didn't go away. So I have a tool that can help solve that problem and can help you get unstuck. It's a one page summary of your book that I call My Book at a Glance. And today I'm gonna walk you through this tool. I'm gonna tell you why it's important and when you can use it. And at the end, I'm gonna let you know how you can access a copy of it. Now, I wanna be clear, while I exclusively coach nonfiction, you can adapt this tool for fiction as well. So let me walk you through this tool. It's one page, as I said, it's called My Book at a Glance, and there are 10 steps. I have actually done this, my, I've done this many times, used this many times with clients, but I've done it for my own writing as well. So I'm gonna just walk you through this and give you some examples um, of how it works. Before I walk you through the 10 steps, let me just say a couple of other things. This is a great tool to help you corral or contain your book idea. It's also a great tool if you 
think you already, you know, you might even have a draft of a manuscript, but it's not working. And this tool can help you see where the holes are in your process or in your idea. So the first step is a working title. Your title may change over and over again, but you should you should put down a working title. It's kind of a stake in the ground. What is it? It defines the concept of your book. And you should be clear on why you're choosing this title. I've gone through dozens of titles in my book and I've landed on finally Graveyard of Safe Choices, which I'm really happy with um, because it defines the, it defines what my book is really about and, and the change that happens. So you need, a, you need a working title. That's your first step. Step two is the genre of your book. Now, if you're working in nonfiction, that's pretty much divided between memoir or narrative nonfiction that reads like a novel, but it's actually true, um, or what we call prescriptive nonfiction, which is self-help, how-to. So you need to get clear on what your book, where the category of your book, and if you're writing a novel, what genre is it going in? It can't be too fuzzy because if it's too fuzzy, you're not going to be able to sell the book, whether you self-publish or you go through trad traditional publication. You need to be clear on your genre. And if you're not, that's an indication you have some more, more work to do. The next three steps all relate to your ideal reader. Um, your So step number three is who is that ideal reader? Now, you don't want to be saying, oh, anyone would love my book. That may be true. But again, as you're trying to hone your book and shape it and ultimately sell your book, you need to be clear about who that person is that is most likely to pick pick up your book. So that's your ideal reader. And in my case, my ideal reader was is a woman at midlife whose deep desire is to really live her next chapter. So she does, but she doesn't know what that means for her or how to get there. So the, the next two steps, steps four and five, also relate to this ideal reader. What is her struggle? Um, what keeps her up at night? That's step four. And then step five is what message does your reader need to hear? So again, this is really, really um, super important when you're writing how-to or self-help books. You need to understand your reader's pain, you know, the classic pain points. Um, and get really, really clear on that. And then be sure that your book is providing a solution to that. But this is also even true for memoir or even a novel, which I know might sound kind of crazy, but it is true. You need to understand what your reader is looking for, what she'll connect with. And maybe your reader just needs to be entertained um, for a novel. And, and that's great, but you have to understand you really have to get into the head of your ideal reader. So now I'm gonna move us on to step six, which is probably the most important step of all in this um, book at a glance um, tool, which is what is your main point or your takeaway? If you don't understand this, your book is not gonna work. Um, whether you're writing a novel, memoir, self-help, or, or other um, how-to prescriptive nonfiction, you have absolutely got to be crystal clear on what is your main point and what's your take, what's the reader's takeaway. When she finishes reading your book, what do you hope she will know or think or feel that is different from before she had the experience of reading your book? I have, I hammer, I've hammered home on this in previous episodes and I will continue to because if you don't get this right, um, your book is going to be mush and it is not going to succeed. And this is not easy. And this is probably the place where you will discover you've got a hole in your process or you've got more thinking to do about your book idea. The point I finally landed on for my memo memoir, which let me assure you, took me a long time to get to this pithy sentence or two is that there's a voice deep inside each of us calling us to be more fully ourselves. The question is, will we listen to it? And um, so that is number six, and that's the central, central, most important point. The seventh point in the book at a glance is why you? Why are you uniquely qualified to write this book? Now, granted, if you're um, writing a memoir, you're like, it's my story. 
But if you're writing self-help or how to, you need to show your expertise. So I'm going to just quickly run us through the remaining titles and then the remaining steps in the book at a glance. And then I'll let you know how you can how you can access this. Um, step eight is what are other titles in your uh, comparable titles? What are other books your readers might have been might be reading? You need to understand those. So you understand the marketplace. Number nine is an overview of your book, summarizing it in a paragraph. That is super tough, but it's super important. Again, you have to be able to contain your story or your idea. And number 10 is kind of a fun exercise. It's imagining your book out in the world and imagine your dream book review. What would somebody say um, in your wildest dreams about your book? And then also imagine your nightmare book review, which is kind of hard, but this will also show you where you need to watch out for. This is a great tool to use at multiple points in your book writing journey. Now, if you're just getting started, it helps you contain your book idea. If you're stuck in the middle, it will help you refocus so you can move forward. And if you've completed your manuscript, but it just isn't working, it's a tool that will help you make a revision plan for your book. It identifies the holes in your manuscript or your book idea. Now, if you're interested in accessing my book at a glance, just go to yourstoryfinder.com and sign up for my newsletter. It's chock full of tips to help writers get started, get unstuck, and get their stories out into the world. And I'll make sure you get my book at a glance if you go ahead and just sign up for that newsletter and I'll send it to your inbox. Now, next time we're gonna be talking about how to think about your book as a product in the marketplace, because that's what it is. We're gonna take on the paradox of your book needing to be both completely unique and exactly the same as other books that are in your genre. You won't want to miss this one. I look forward to seeing you then. And in the meantime, happy reading and writing. So You Want to Write a Book is part of the Candy Factory mini-series and is a proud member of the Candy Factory Collective. You can find the show streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And you can subscribe to the audio version anywhere you get your podcasts. Over the past eight years, Suzette has been on a mission to help writers clear the fog and cut through the overwhelm so they can move their ideas out of their head and onto the page. Her later in life coming out journey and her professional experience as an author, accelerator, certified book coach, and dare to lead trained professional, as well as her time at Harvard Law School, Wellesley College, and Columbia Theological Seminary have given her a unique perspective, as well as many of her own stories to tell. When she's not writing or coaching other writers, Suzette can be found on her yoga mat, advocating for the Lancaster LGBTQ plus coalition, or hanging out with her partner, Wendy, and their rescue pup, Lucy. Visit yourstoryfinder.com to learn more about Suzette and her life story, as well as her writing coach offerings. Life's too short to stay stuck, so why not write that book? So You Want to Write a Book is produced by the Candy Factory Collective at the Candy Factory Coworking Campus in Lancaster, PA. Production support by Anna Tran. Administrative support by Ann Kirby, Ariana Henderson, Krisha Marcel, Jason Mundock, and Robert Diggs. Notes and links can be found on the show post at our website, candyfactorycollective.com. Candy Factory. Collective.